All right, good morning, everyone. We are starting a new series called The Grit of the Spirit. The Grit of the Spirit. And I'm going to explain what grit means. A lot of people maybe who have never heard this word. Um, I recently just learned this word, and I, and I think it's, it's exactly what we need today. We are living in a time where um, things might continuously not go our way. Like we are living in a time where, again, people are getting sick. People that are our close loved ones are, are getting sick. People are losing their jobs. We are going to face challenges in our society. Our economy is struggling. Our churches are, are, are functioning with, with limited capacity. So this is something that, that I really believe we have to, to, to pray for and get through. Okay, because this is, this is something that, that we need. I'm explaining what grit is. You may feel like you have low spiritual energy these days. You know, like things aren't the same. I don't feel motivated anymore. Yeah, I do my prayers. I go to church when it's open. I do my thing, but it needs a lot more than that. And what we need more than anything is what we call grit, right? Grit is... Um, a term that is used in the workplace now, telling you know pe people to, to work hard, they need grit. Um, athletes, people who are athletes, and you see that the best athletes out there are the ones that have grit. They are the ones that make it to the end. They are the ones that um, reach the championships, not because of their talent. Um, if, if you if you watch the NBA, if you watch professional basketball, and you will see, you will see that that it's not enough. To be, it's not enough to be just talented. You have to have this inner perseverance. What is grit? Grit is the thing at the core of your being. Okay, it is is this thing within your being, within yourself, that drives perseverance and a significant impact on on your life. Like there is this drive within you that pushes you to accomplish things. And when you don't have this drive or grit, okay, you end up not being determined to, you give up on things, you, things just aren't, um, sorry about the, the streaming issue, there's just this, this streaming issue and it's, it's, uh, it's not working, so we're just going to go on Facebook. Like I said, this is something that is, that is so important for us to understand, and you will see that your kids need it. Your kids need to have grit. You know, what, what does that mean? Well, your, your, your kids are learning to be kind of weaklings. We're, we're, we're making weaklings out of our kids, out of this generation. We are leading like this generation to kind of take things easy and not being used to doing things like to doing things that are difficult. People more than anything need a strength and a determination beyond themselves and their own capacity to persevere when their marriages seem impossible. How many of you gotten to a point where you just seem like your marriage is just impossible to be successful? Well, what you need is grit. You need something to endure, something to keep you going. And it has to be something beyond your own strength. It's this thing within you that pushes you to, to, to strive and to work hard. What about a sin that you have been so weak against for for years maybe 10 years you've been following the sin and you just feel defeated and some people they just get to the point where they say you know what this is just who i am this is just what it is no you need grit you hear about grit in leadership circles you know when they do leadership training they're saying the best leaders are are, are those that have grit i remember i was watching a leadership kind of thing they were telling leaders that if this is what you do, if this is the level or the, the line of what you do, you know, that this is like your capacity or you have the strength to do this, set your goal to here. So if this is, if this is what you have the ability and the capability to do, set your, your goals up here. Not up here, so you don't burn out, and not too low, otherwise you have no growth. And so to get from here to here, this stretch goal of ours, Okay, to have this stretch goal, you have to, you have to have what we call grit. Grit is this push within you to get past some of the things that, that make us feel weak. And I'm going to give you, there's something called the lesson of the butterfly. Let me just read you this parable. It's a beautiful parable in, in which you understand this concept of grit. 
It says a man spent hours watching a butterfly struggling to emerge from its cocoon. It managed to make a small hole, but its body was too large to get through it. After a long struggle, it appeared to be exhausted and remained absolutely still. The man watching decided to help the butterfly and with a pair of scissors, he cut open the cocoon to release the butterfly. However, the butterfly's body was very small and wrinkled and its wings were all crumpled. The man continued to watch, hoping that at any moment the butterfly would open its wings and fly away. Nothing happened. In fact, the butterfly spent the rest of its brief life dragging around its shrunken body and shriveled wings incapable of flying. What the man, out of kindness and his eagerness to help, had failed to understand was that the tight cocoon and the efforts that the butterfly had to make in order to squeeze out of that tiny hole were nature's way of training the butterfly and of strengthening its wings. Let me explain it. You have a butterfly. He's trying to break through its, its little shell. And he couldn't get through. And he, couldn't, he, he felt too weak. And so a man did. He came and he opened the cocoon so that the butterfly could come out. Well, that butterfly was never able to fly. Its wings were not strong enough. Because nature has its way of building a strength within the wings of the butterfly, okay, that it should eventually break open that cocoon or come out of that cocoon and be able to fly. But see, what the man was trying to do was trying to make it easy on the person. He was cutting the cocoon so the, per the, the butterfly could just get out freely. But what he did was he prevented the butterfly from developing the strength within itself, in its wings, to be able to fly. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but the message of the parable is clear. Sometimes... Making things easy on ourselves or on our children and our family, extra easy or too easy, okay, is actually going to prevent them. It's going to do more harm than good. It's going to reduce strength within our children, this strength that we need our children to have within themselves. We need them to have grit, to be fighters, to be strong, you know. In, in Arabic, you know, you say like, we want them to be like strong men, right? This concept of being a strong man is not something that we are seeing in this generation, actually. We're seeing people that like to take the easy way out. We see people that like to quit when things are too hard. That people say, oh no, that's too hard. I don't want to do it. No. We are robbing ourselves and our youth of strength. You know, when I tell people to, to encourage their kids to fast, they tell me, you know, Buna, they're still young and, and it's too hard for them. Your kids are never going to be strong. They're never going to have a strong will. They're never going to be able to say no to themselves. They're never going to be able to overcome when they are 12, 13, 15, 17 years old. And we're telling them it's too hard for them to fast. It's too hard for them to wake up early. It's too hard for them to stay up late studying. No. Beware of the things that you do to make your own life easy okay the things that you make that you do to make your own life easy are the same things that are making you a weak not just human being but a weak christian and let's be honest let's be honest this is this is something think about the ways we spoil our kids you know like if it's a little bit cold we drive our kids to the, the, the stop sign where, where the bus stop is so they don't get cold from the house to the end of the street walking Teach your kids to bundle up and be a little bit cold and to be strong. I'm not saying torture your kids. You say like, haram alik, like be, be gentle. I, I agree. We, 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 there, there is a benefit in keeping our kids warm while they're walking down the street. But there's also a benefit in them learning to endure the cold. And then learning to do hard things. To, instead of walking um, to, to their friend's house, their, their neighbor's house, we, we, we give them a ride and it's two blocks away. You're like, let your kid learn how to ride a bike or walk or be strong. We need grit. And the empathy that you feel towards yourselves, right? We want everything to be easy. We want everything to be convenient. Is, is actually killing our generation. And right now, when it seems like it's the end of the world with with. All the chaos that's happening within our society with the, the, the pandemic, with sickness and people losing their jobs and everything that is going on, 
People in the face of it are collapsing. Really, people are collapsing. They don't know how to be alone. People that are extra social, they don't know how to be alone. People that don't have um, the doors of the, of the church open, what's happening to them? They don't know how to pray at home. If, if, if they're not being led by somebody, they don't know how to do it on their own. They are missing this concept of having grit within themselves. I'll tell you, I went to, when I was first ordained, I was invited to go to a convention with our youth. It's a, a youth retreat. And it was a, a retreat for, for all the churches in, in, in an area. And so we went, I took some youth, and I attended the first session. I was literally a priest for, for two months. I, I, I didn't have a full beard yet. Like, I was a brand new priest. And I get there, and the speaker kind of just jumped into the talk. No sign of the cross, no introductory prayer. Ends the talk. We don't pray, we don't do anything. And then we have like a discussion group with the youth, no prayer, nothing. So I asked the other priests that were there, all, all the priests from the area were, were at this convention. I'm like, fathers, like, why are we not praying? Why are we not like, we don't, we don't see our father. We don't do anything. And they said, Abuna, Malish, these are just high school kids. Come on, they're high school kids. I'm like, a high school kid can't say to our father? Like, what are we training this generation to be? If it's too much for us to stand these young men and young women to stand up, not just to say to our father, but like, it's okay to pray. It's okay to, to, to read the, the Agbeya. It's okay to get them up early to do, to pray a liturgy. And I realized we are destroying this generation. Ourselves first. And I'm not just talking about our kids. Ourselves first. We are taking the easy way out. And now, because of it, we are not going to find strong people to endure in their faith, to overcome sin, to be mature spiritually, to acquire the things that might not come very easily. Like learning a hymn, right? Learning a, a, a hymn for the church is not easy, but we have to do it. We have to do it because it's our worship. It's the way that we live. Think about all the things that we do to make our lives easier. And we do the same thing spiritually. We're not letting ourselves or our children do hard things and to face challenges that will teach them growth and strengthen their wings. We want our young people, we want our youth to strengthen their wings, to be powerful, to be mature, to be able to endure. Listen to this verse. If you turn with me, open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Open up with me. Ephesians chapter 6 is um, a chapter about the armor of God, but this is a, a key verse and I, and I want to talk about it. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Follow along with me. St. Paul says this to the people, the church of the Ephesians. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. I want you to imagine right now. Okay, listen to this. St. Paul is telling the church, he says, Number one, take up the whole armor of God. So he's telling them, look, you need armor because we are in a war. And so you need to be strong. You need to be clothed with armor, right? With an iron shield and, and armor and helmet because you are in a battle. We can't be telling uh, ourselves and our children and those around us that, that, you know, come on, God doesn't want you to be miserable. God doesn't want you. No, God wants you to be strong. God does want you to be strong. Take up the whole armor of God. Listen to this. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. What St. Paul is saying is that there's going to be evil days that we are going to need to be able to endure and withstand. And you need to be strong for that. And right now, your kids are, are, are nice and sweet and you feel like everything is good. But what happens when that evil day comes? He says that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Having done all to stand. Let's be honest. Would you describe our generation, this day and age, as us raising, again, not just our children, even ourselves in the spiritual life. Training ourselves to do hard things. Having done all to stand strong in the midst of battle against sin. 
having done all, having used all of my strength and all of my power and every ounce of grit within me to stand and not be defeated. This is what we are called to. We need to stand. St. Anthony has a very touching part in this story in his life. If you read the, the Life of Anthony by St. Athanasius, every one of us and our children need to read this book and it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit gory. It's a little bit scary, right? There's, there's a lot of fighting with demons and, and attacks and St. Anthony's getting beat up. It's not easy, okay? But that's why I want our generation to read this book. So St. Anthony decided he was going to live among the tombs, to live a spiritual life. And he was living among the tombs, praying. And one day, the, the, the demons appeared to him and beat him almost to death, right? Bruised, broken bones, could barely stand. So St. Athanasius took St. Anthony to a church to, to help take care of him and to kind of bandage his wounds and, and make sure that he could be taken care of. Well, in the middle of the night, St. Anthony kind of like found his strength. He stood up again and he went back into the tombs. And listen to what St. Anthony quotes him saying. He gets to the tombs and he shouts, right? He's, he's almost crippled, he's bruised, he can barely stand. He says, Behold, I am Antony. I love this. He says, I am Antony. Okay? Pay attention to this. And nothing shall separate me from the love of Christ. How amazing that he goes back to the place in which he was warring with the devils and he stands and he says, I am Antony. I'm a son of God and nothing will separate me from the love of Christ. I will fight against you and I will endure and nothing you do will take me away from worshiping the Lord. And St. Anthony was St. Anthony from that point on. St. Anthony was St. Anthony. And St. Anthony was amazing. Well, you say, how did he get there? How did he get this grit within him to be able to fight against the demons and to endure? Even though, I want you to imagine, you say, I'm going to become a Sunday school teacher. I'm not telling you to be a monk in the desert. You're going to be a Sunday school teacher. And, and the devils come and they beat you up on the first day. What's the next thing you're going to say? I'm out. I'll actually tell you a story that, that happened to me when... I was making the decision, me and my wife, to, to consecrate our lives and we were going to move to Kenya and we moved to Kenya and, and we were doing this to, to live as missionaries and, and to move one way and we are going to leave our jobs and take our son and everything. And I remember um, Bishop Paul actually happened to be visiting us when we were in California and he spent the night in our, in our house and he was telling us about, you know, like the calling and how we need to be serious about our calling and giving our lives to God. And, and we were praying about it, whatever. And, and Sherry and I kind of felt encouraged and we we're like, okay, like, like, let's do this. Let, let's take this decision. We began to pray and fast, whatever. That night we were doing, we were praying and fasting before and then he came and so we felt this extra push. That night we were sleeping in our, in our we had a two bedroom condo. We were in our bedroom and we didn't have any ki kids yet. And, and say no sleeping in the next room. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, our master bedroom door slams open and slams shut. It slams open and slams shut three times. And then we see this hand. So our dresser was right by the door into the bedroom. And so we see this hand with a black sleeve kind of like this. But we did, it was black, so it was at, at night. And it was like tapping on our dresser and kind of... And we were freaked out. We pulled up our, like, our hand crosses. We were doing the sign of the cross. And, and, and Sherry thought it was the bishop. Like he's sleepwalking or whatever. And... She's like, tell him to stop. We're, we're not going anymore. Like, tell him to stop. Like, see what's wrong. Of course, I, I'm just as freaked out as she is. But <laughs> So, you know, I wait to figure, okay, there's no noise outside. I go outside. I listen. His door is closed. He's snoring. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. He's sleeping. And we're like, in the morning, like, Satan, are you okay? Like, what happened last night? He's like, what are you talking about? He said, I've been on flights for a few days. I've never been this tired. I slept so well last night, and I, I thank you so much. And I'm like, th then what was it last night? And he's like, the devil's fighting against you. You're trying to make a decision to follow God. And the first thing we said, okay, we're not going. Get this guy out of our house. Like, we're, we're out. No. We had to say, we are going to go, and we are going to fight, and we are going to give our lives to Jesus, and nothing will hold us back. And I want you to have that same mentality. I will give my life to Christ, and we will... Having done all to stand, we will do all to stand. So St. Anthony 
was like this. How did St. Anthony get this inner strength? If you read his story, it says when he was a young boy, it says he would eat whatever was put before him. He never said no. He never um, picked at his food. He never asked for specific foods. This is when he was a young boy. You say, okay, what does that mean? He was training himself to be disciplined from a young age. He was training himself to think about, like, I don't want to be, like, used to pleasure. It's okay if things aren't easy. And so St. Anthony, as a young boy, was not picking at his food, was, was not, you know, choosing the food that brings him the most pleasure, all for the sake of being, having grit within himself. And this is why St. Anthony is St. Anthony. And it says that he would reflect on his way walking to church, walking to church, thinking about how the apostles encouraged the whole church that everybody was laying all their possessions at the feet of the apostles to give their lives to Christ. His mind was elevated to living a life of grit. And we said grit is this perseverance to endure and to overcome and to reach, you know, higher levels. I am Antony and nothing shall separate me from the love of Christ. I love that line. You see, standing our ground is an everyday necessity. It's the difference between marriage and divorce. Marriage and divorce. If you feel like you can't stand anymore and, and you want a divorce, you have no grit. You need to fight. You need to fight for your marriage. You need to fight against yourself. You need to get fight against the demons that are fighting your home. Even fitness. You know, and, 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 and being healthy physically or, 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 you know, and going to the gym or being lazy and, and being unhealthy. You need grit to get off your bottom and go to the gym and discipline yourself and change your eating habits. Grit is the difference between responsibility and entitlement. Our kids feel like they're entitled to have everything nice and easy and perfect versus responsibility. Grit is the difference between those two things. Success and failure in the classroom. Success and if you have grit, you will overcome uh, trials and, and difficult tests. Actually, it's not the smart people. It's not the smart people that are successful. You know, we always think, well, I'm not that smart. No. The people that are smarter aren't the successful ones. It's the people that work harder. It's the people that work harder. Okay, It's people that push through. Just because your, your mind can... can can grasp, you know, mathematical facts or, or whatever. No, it's the people that can stay up and say, I don't mind staying up and being tired and studying and doing more. On the field, in sports, Kobe Bryant is the reason why 2020 went downhill, right? Kobe Bryant was a famous basketball player. He's one of the greatest basketball players that ever lived, if not the greatest. And he was known to have grit. He would wake up at three. He's the best player. He was a star. He had the best shot. He, he was amazing. He would wake up at like three, four o'clock in the morning and go to the gym and shoot hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shots before the games because he wanted to. He had grit. He was a fighter from within. And that's why he was successful. Also, grit is the difference between maturity and immaturity in the relationship with God. I witnessed grit, grit among faithful servants. You know, when I was living in the mission, our days in Africa were, were, were sometimes scary, right? Any government official could come to our hospital and, and want to do an inspection and look for any reason to, to shut down the hospital so that you would give them a bribe or something to, to, to keep the hospital open. And so every day, somebody was coming to disturb you, to try to steal the land of the church. And, and I experienced this a lot. And I remember in, in Tanzania, and I have shared the story before, in Tanzania, there was a time where People were corrupt there and, and they're trying to basically like steal the land of the church. You know, they're saying, oh, this should be the land of the Tanzanians and the building of the Tanzanians. The church shouldn't have the rightful ownership of this. And they tried to kick us out of this country and very, very scary. And I remember telling Sayyidina, Sayyidina, just close down Tanzania. Like, like this place, people do like magic and they marry several times. Just, it was terrible. And he said, Mikey, let me tell you something. He said, Tanzania is where I learned how to pray. It's where I learned how to get on my knees and fight in prayer. I will never shut down Tanzania. We will never lose to the devil. This is never going to be the devil's kingdom. We will fight in this mission and we will serve and we will do prayer meetings and we will preach and we will put ourselves at risk and we will do everything because we will never lose to the devil. This is the grit 
that I am looking for in, in my kids, in the youth, in the servants of today, in our future priests, we, in, 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 in wives and in mothers that are going to raise our children. We need grit. We need to raise our children to be strong, to have this inner perseverance and endurance. I learned how to pray here in Tanzania. I learned how to get on my knees in, in this place of, of darkness. I love that. Have you ever, ever seen anyone who's overcome a disease or a sickness in the face of, of hopeless news from the doctors or, or lacking medical research, you know, because of, of their determination to fight through the disease, they change their diets, they, they exercise, they're, gonna, they're determined to overcome. Those people have grit. I'm asking you today, do you have grit in your spiritual life? Do you have the grit of the spirit that says, I am a child or a son or a daughter of God and I will be like victorious. I will never give, you know, sometimes the youth, you know, when they come and they speak to me and they say, you know, but Abuna, if, if I do that, I may not have any friends. As if I'm supposed to say, oh, you're right. Okay, so you shouldn't like stand up for your faith or you, you know, should go ahead and smoke with them or, or do whatever. I should, I'm not going to have any friends if I do what you're telling me. And I'm like, and? <laughs> like, so what? Like, it's okay. Like, it's better to have no friends and, and not go to hell than, than have a ton of friends and go to hell and perish and lose your life and get addicted to drugs and, and make mistakes. It's okay. Be strong. Be a man. Be tough, man. Like, stop being so, like, but I'm not going to have any friends. So what? <laughs> Who cares? Be strong. This is grit. But let me tell you, grit is not something you cannot just like desire to have. Grit matters. And sometimes grit is the difference between life and death, like I was talking about in the, in the aspect of health. Though we're often desperate for the strength to persevere through our challenges, our supply is limited. Not everybody has enough grit. And this is where what we're gonna learn in this series is how to get the grit that comes from Christ. The, this passion that comes from a love of Christ and the power that only comes from Christ. Yeah, I want to fight. And this is what happens is that you have grit after a retreat. You get like um, an increase of grit. Uh, you're like, that's it. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to do my things. And then it wears out because it runs out. But you're not getting your grit from Christ. And this is what we need to talk about. We need a source of strength outside of ourselves to help us face and overcome these challenges that demand more than we have to give in your marriage, like I said, in your careers, in your spiritual walk, in, in, in your daily, in your raising your kids. You need grit. Now, don't you think about Moses before Pharaoh. You see, Moses was at the burning bush and he saw the bush burning. And the Lord began to call Moses and he told him, you know, take off your, your, your shoes from on you're on holy ground. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 3. After he sees this sight, verse 7 says, The Lord said, I've seen my, the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their so sorrows. And so he's basically telling Moses in verse 10, Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Verse 11, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? I would love to, but I don't have the strength to do that. This is Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the entire universe. Okay, listen to this. Verse 12, so he said, God said, in verse 12, Exodus 3, verse 12. So he said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, Who is this God? What's your name? He says, My name. Tell them that my name is I am who I am. He says, Okay. Then what? Like, what if that doesn't work? He says, I want you to take your rod and I want you to throw it to the ground and it's going to turn to a snake. Okay, what if that doesn't work? He says, Okay. He gives them all these. Moses didn't have the grit in the beginning. To go and do what God was calling him to do. But God said, you can't do it. I'm going to do it through you. Moses was very, very afraid at this. And he went and he threw down the rod. 
and then the magicians came and brought out their rod, and, and their rod turned into snakes, and, and his rod turned into snake. But Moses' rod, which was a snake, turned into a snake, was able to eat the rod of, of, of the magicians. Why? Because God's power was there. I want you to imagine, for 40 years, these people are walking around the wilderness, trying to get to the promised land, which should have taken only 11 days. Okay. Moses had to have had grit, but a grit that comes from somewhere else. When you come before the Red Sea and you are done and Pharaoh is coming behind you and he wants to kill you and you don't know what to do, this is when you say, Lord, I need a power beyond me. And this is what we're going to be talking about. How we can have this, this spiritual grit. Listen to verse Exodus 3, 19 to 20. But I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. This is what God is telling Moses. I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not even by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in its midst. And after that, he will let you go. Have you ever had someone tell you that God will never give you more than you can handle? That is not the truth. God will give you something more than you can handle, but he will never give you something more than what he can handle. And God sometimes will give you challenges. And actually, St. Anthony, when he was fighting against the demons, and St. Anthony said, Lord, where were you? Where were you just watching me get destroyed by demons? And he said, I wanted to watch you struggle. But from now on, your name will be great and you will be powerful and they will never have power over you. Why? Because God wanted him to struggle. God wanted him to develop this grit. And when you are with God, when we are with God, and I don't mean just like, like we're all Christians and we go to church. No, I mean we are with God. We are united to God. We are abiding in Christ. We get what he has. And that's spiritual grit. When, when St. Paul was going through all this weakness and, and, and suffering and difficult times, Christ said, my grace <coughs> is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength will be made perfect in your weakness. That's where your grit kicks in. That my grace will kick in when you confess that I am weak, Lord, and I need a strength beyond myself. John 15, oh, sorry, Ephesians chapter 6, listen to this. Finally, my brethren, so I read you Ephesians 6.13, but before that it says this, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His mind. You need to be strong, but not with your own strength. When you try to overcome a sin, when you try to fight for your marriage, you're doing it with your own strength. And sometimes God in His love will let you have a miserable time in this war and you will fall to your knees and say, Lord, I can't do it anymore. That's when God will kick in. That's when God's grit will kick in and give you this endurance and pour out his love into your heart to be able to love more and to sacrifice more and give in the face of uh, 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 something that's very, very hard to do it. You see, spiritual grit is, is when St. Paul says, the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us it is the who are being saved, it is the power of God. The cross is the power of God. This, not just the symbol, Definitely part of this, the, the symbol as well. The sign of the cross is our power. But the cross, carrying the cross, is our power. Enduring the cross and loving the cross is where you grow in power. Christ says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You'll never have enough grit to get through the pandemic or this disease or you losing your job, or a loss of income, or a broken marriage, or kids that are lost. You need grit. You need this grit within. Let me tell you something. Grit is not a birthright. You are not born with grit. It is something that, it is a core strength that must be developed in you. There's an incredible movie. It's a bloody movie because it's a war movie, right? So it, it's, it's called Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge. It's a Christian movie. It is one of the most powerful movies. And, and like, it's, it's not going to be a spoiler, alert, but, but like, I want to I wanna tell you about this. This man is trying to save people in war. And, and he's been doing it for, for days and hours, and he, he, he's got no more strength. And he kept on just telling the Lord, please, Lord, just one more. I'm not going to give it away. 
go and watch the movie Hacksaw Ridge. An unbelievable movie. I'm telling you right now, it's a bloody movie because there's a lot of blowing up and whatever because of war. If you want to know what grit is, watch Hacksaw Ridge. It's passion and perseverance for very long-term goals. I want to tell you something. Grit is not for a quick sprint. It is for the marathon. Okay? You get grit when you are training for a marathon, not a quick short-term goal. You want your children not to be comfortable for today, but you want them to be able to endure in the future. You want yourself, maybe things are nice right now. Things are, are great. You have a great job. You have money. Thank God you're not sick. Your family is doing well. Everything's nice, fine and dandy. But look, crosses come to every single one of us. Hard times come to all of us. But you need spiritual grit when things don't go the way you see in the future. I usually tell this to, to couples as I'm counseling them for, for you know, premarital counseling. I tell them, look, right now you're lovey-dovey, he's cute, she's cute, we're, we're happy, we love each other. But let me tell you, you never plan for the unforeseen. If God forbid we were to lose a loved one, or we lose our child, God forbid a child were to die. Is this person or, or you, do you have the strength to endure, the spiritual strength to endure something that is going to be beyond you. If you lose your job for years and, and you have no income, it, okay, she's cute, he's cute, we love each other, it's nice. But if you don't have spiritual grit to overcome challenges, you will never, ever overcome. And I want to read this passage. I know we're going a little bit long today, but I want you to read this passage. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Read with me. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. Get this lady away, she's annoying. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Basically, I can't help you, lady. I'm here for the, for the Israelites. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And, Jesus, and she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. If you look at this story, you say, Why was Jesus behaving in this way? Why was he not willing to help her? Why, what was Jesus trying to do? Jesus was trying to do two things. He was trying to build grit within her. See, how much did she want to fight for God's healing and God's power? Because it comes through fighting and faith. And number two, he wanted to expose her courage to us. So I want you, when you look at it, you're going to look and say, like the Lord is, is, is a monster by, by, by the way that he's responding. He's like basically, he's basically, you know, responding in, 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 in a way that is rude. Like, Lord, she's asking for help and you're saying not even, you know, like, like the dogs. You know, he's saying, he's saying it is not good to, to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Lord, you see, Jesus was trying to expose her inner grit. Jesus takes great risks with people, with you and me. To surface your courage, to bring your courage out, to grow your courage. If God is not answering, he's doing the same thing he did with this woman. If God is not making things as easy as you would like them, he's doing what he did with this woman. He wants you to say, we're going to even eat the crumbs that fall off the children's table. Yes, I'm a dog. But even the dog eats the crumbs. This woman had so much grit, fighting. She had so much faith. And the Lord said, oh woman, great is your faith. Great is your faith. When you read the Word of God, I'm going to end here. When you read the Word of God and you study the character of the Lord Jesus, you study to grow in love with Him, not just to study and, and learn cool things about the Word of God and the secrets. You do it to grow in love. And if you are reading the Bible and it's not growing, you're not growing in love with Jesus, your issue is, is that you're asking yourself the wrong questions when you read. You shouldn't ask yourself, what did he do in the story? He healed somebody, he walked on water, he cast out a demon. No. 
ask yourself, why did he do what he did? Every time you read the Word of God, and every time you read something, some word that Christ said, or some challenge that Christ faced, or, or something that he put, a challenge that he put someone through, I want you to say, not what did he do, but why did he do it? I want to understand something about the heart of Jesus. Of course, of course Christ healed this woman. Of course he loved her. And of course he wanted, I can't just say, what did he do? He didn't give her anything and then he gave her something. No. He built up her courage. When you say, what did he do? That's not the question. When you read the word of God, you want to build this grit through growing in love and in passion for Christ. And you get this passion by witnessing his passion for you. And his passion for his great love for you. And what he wants to build in you. Don't ask yourself what. Ask yourself why. Once again. Don't ask yourself what. Ask yourself why. I really, really want you to understand this concept. Ask yourself why did Jesus do this? Why did Jesus, uh, like, not help this woman? Why did Jesus... When the blind man that he healed, it says he healed him like in phases. He First he saw men walking like trees and then finally he could see clearly. Ask yourself, why does he do this? What is he trying to accomplish? And this is how you will grow to see the heart of Jesus. And this will build up grit. And for the next few weeks we're going to talk about grit. But you want to build up this thing. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Like Taste and see the heart of Jesus in everything he says and does. This is your challenge for this week, that when you read, to ask yourself, why? For example, why does a good shepherd leave his whole flock to, to graze on the hillside to pursue and rescue one sheep that is lost? Why? The answer is, the heart of Jesus is focused on individuals, not crowds. There's an answer why he does what he does. Not what did he do? He ran after the, the lost. Okay, that's nice. But why does he do it? Understand the heart of Jesus. Jesus is actually not nice in a lot of stories with, with, the, with the Pharisees, with this woman. He's not, Jesus is good and Jesus is loving, but he's not always nice. And you have to ask yourself why. The truth is, is Jesus is always kind, but he's rarely nice because he's trying to grow within us to see the truth in him, to understand his heart, why he does what he does. Next thing I want to encourage you to do hard things. Hard things that, that are beyond yourself a little bit. You need a stretch goal. You like, let's say this is your goal. If you can accomplish the goal pretty easy, then it doesn't work. Like when you work out, if I can lift 200 pounds, or, or for my sake, like let's say I lift 350 pounds, that I can do that easily. But if, if, if I do you know, 400 pounds, I'm going to struggle a little bit. Then my goal should be to lift 400 pounds, to stretch a little bit, to push, to do more, to extend myself. This is something that you're going to need when you, you need grit, when you doubt your intrinsic worth, when you believe the lies about yourself, when you have anxiety, when you experience these challenges, you need these experiences of trusting in God of growing in Him and understanding Him. You need direct experiences of this power, reshaping and confirming who we really are in Christ. But it's not going to be by us, our status quo, quo Christianity. I go to church, I say my little prayers, I read my Bible, and that's it. I want you to grow in love with the person of Jesus, grow in passion for Him, that you want to give yourself to Him. When I read you know, the Pope Carollo's uh, book called The Silent Patriarch, in, in, in reading not only about Christ himself, but read about and study the lives of the people that were also in love with Jesus. That'll build grit in you when you read about Mother Teresa and how much she endured just to care for the poorest of the poor who, who could never give her back. Or Amba Braham who gave to the poor beyond, beyond himself. Pope Carolus who struggled in his prayers and endured so much um, persecution and, and, and challenges in his life. That builds up grit. I remember reading his story. I wanted to pray. I wanted to, to do more. I wanted to offer more in my fasts. Do hard things. Pay close attention to the passion of others towards Jesus. Build your trust in Jesus in, in stretching yourself a little bit. And at the same time, when you study the Word of God, don't ask yourself what, 
but ask yourself why. As we continue this series, in the next few weeks, hopefully we'll be able to grow in our spiritual great and glory be to God forever. Amen. Let's end in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our dear Heavenly Father, will we come before you. And we give you thanks, Lord, that you have done everything that you have done in the Word of God with your saints, with the, the heroes of faith, with the saints. And you've shown us, Lord, how amazing you are, how you do beyond wonders. Help us to fall in love, to, to have this passionate love for Jesus that will help us fight against sin, will help us fight against the challenges that make us want to give up. Lord, we need your power, we need your strength that comes from within. Help us to raise our children, to, to grow in grit, to be able to be powerful and to be able to endure hard times and not to be just used to, to easy things. Lord, I'm sorry and I confess, maybe even as a church leader, we, we've taken things easily. We haven't stretched ourselves. Grow within us this great Lord, to be powerful Christians and believers. We love you, Lord. We pray that we would really grow in this understanding of how to stand and withstand evil, having done all to continue standing. We pray this in your holy and precious name, the intercessions of St. Mary and the prayers of St. Mark, St. John the Baptist, the blessings of these holy days make us worthy to pray. Thankfully, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Now may the love of God the Father, the grace of the only begotten Son, our Lord God, and Savior Jesus Christ, the gift and the flesh of the Holy Spirit be with you. Go in peace. May the peace.